Is it possible to grow taller after puberty? Most people would say no. Your growth plates close and that's it. But that's not the full story. Your bones are not fixed objects. They're alive. They sense, adapt, and change in response to the world around you. Later in this video we'll cover Wolf's Law, the principle that explains how bone remodels itself based on stress. This single law could be the missing piece in understanding late growth spurts, changes in limb length, and even why some athletes seem to defy the limits of human growth. But before we get there, let's lay the groundwork with what's actually happening inside your bones at the cellular level. Osteoblasts and remodeling at the cellular level. Bones look solid, but under a microscope, they're constantly shifting. This is called bone remodeling, a process that never stops. Two types of cells drive this cycle. Osteoclasts, a demolition crew, dissolving old or weak bone. Osteoblasts, the builders, laying down fresh bone. Here's the amazing part. Osteoblasts don't just dump material randomly. They respond to signals from stress, hormones, and even micro damage. They deposit collagen fibers which act as scaffolding, and then pack them with minerals like calcium and phosphorus to harden the structure. This dynamic process explains why broken bones heal stronger, why weightlifters have denser skeletons, and why athletes can sometimes experience changes in limb proportions. Without osteoblasts, growth would be impossible, and Wolf's Law would have nothing to act on. Cartilage, Collagen and Protein To understand growth, you have to understand cartilage. Cartilage is the flexible, cushioning material found at joints and growth plates. Think of it as the mold that bone fills in over time. The key ingredients are Collagen, strong fibrous strands that give cartilage structure and elasticity. Protein, the raw amino acids that make collagen and other bone proteins. When you have enough protein in your diet, your body produces more collagen which strengthens cartilage and gives osteoblasts something to mineralize. Without collagen, bone formation collapses. This is why diets rich in protein and collagen sources, like eggs, lean meats, beans, bone broth and gelatin, don't just help muscles, they help build and protect the very tissue your bones need to remodel and adapt. Minerals and vitamins. The hidden drivers of growth. When people think about bone nutrition, they usually stop at calcium. But calcium is only part of the story. Bone is like reinforced concrete. It needs a variety of minerals to give it strength and durability, and vitamins to direct how those minerals are used. Without them, bones cannot remodel effectively, no matter how much protein or collagen is available. The minerals. Magnesium. This mineral is essential for activating vitamin D, which in turn allows calcium to be absorbed into bone. Without magnesium, calcium remains underutilized, and bones remain weak despite high calcium intake. Natural sources include pumpkin seeds, almonds, spinach, dark chocolate, and avocados. Phosphorus. Phosphorus forms hydroxyapatite crystals, the mineral backbone that gives bone its hardness. It is abundant in meat, dairy, fish, eggs, beans, and nuts, which is why deficiencies are rare but still impactful when they occur. Zinc. Zinc drives cartilage growth and is critical for the enzymes osteoblasts use to lay down new bone tissue. A lack of zinc is strongly associated with stunted growth and delayed bone repair. It can be found in red meat, shellfish such as oysters, pumpkin seeds, and chickpeas. Copper and manganese, these trace minerals strengthen collagen by forming cross-links in its fibers, creating a tougher framework for bone mineralization. Copper can be obtained from foods such as liver, cashews, sesame seeds, and dark chocolate, while manganese is present in pineapple, pecans, oats, and leafy greens. The vitamins vitamin D, often called the calcium gatekeeper, Vitamin D ensures calcium is absorbed in the gut and delivered to bone. Without it, calcium passes through the body unused. The most effective source is direct sunlight exposure. Though it is also present in fatty fish such as salmon and mackerel, egg yolks and fortified dairy products. Vitamin K2. This vitamin directs calcium to the right place, ensuring it is deposited into bone rather than soft tissues or arteries. It is concentrated in fermented foods like natto, hard cheeses, butter, and egg yolks. Vitamin C. Every collagen strand in the body depends on vitamin C for its formation. Without it, cartilage weakens, and bone mineral has nothing to attach to. Citrus fruits, kiwis, strawberries, bell peppers and broccoli are excellent sources. Vitamin A. Vitamin A regulates osteoblast and osteoclast activity, balancing the breakdown of old bone and the construction of new bone. It can be found in carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach and liver. These minerals and vitamins act as the hidden drivers of growth. While osteoblasts and cartilage provide the framework, these nutrients supply the materials and direct the process. Without them, 
The system of bone remodeling cannot function at its full potential. Wolf's Law in Action Now we arrive at the centerpiece of this entire topic, Wolf's Law. In 1892, the German anatomist Julius Wolff made a revolutionary observation. He noticed that bones are not rigid beams but living tissues that constantly adapt to the stresses placed on them. His conclusion became known as Wolff's Law. Bones remodel themselves according to the loads they experience. If a bone is placed under repeated stress, it will respond by becoming stronger, denser, and in some cases slightly reshaped or lengthened. Remove that stress and the opposite occurs. Bones weaken, thin and lose density. You can see this in astronauts who spend months in zero gravity and return with fragile skeletons, or in bedridden patients who lose bone mass after weeks without movement. But the power of Wolf's Law becomes far more interesting when you look at extreme real-world examples. Take Rustam Akhmetov for instance. He became a figure of fascination in height gain communities, because of the way he used targeted mechanical loading and stretching. Over time the forces applied to his body appeared to stimulate adaptation beyond what many thought possible. While his results seemed almost unbelievable, they perfectly illustrate Wolf's principle. Bone responds to the demands placed on it, even in adulthood. This adaptation is not limited to outliers. Consider elite athletes. Basketball players, for example, are constantly exposed to intense vertical loading. Hours of jumping, sprinting and landing every single day. Studies have shown that these repeated impacts do more than just build muscle. They send signals through the skeleton, stimulating remodeling and sometimes even extending growth windows. This may help explain why basketball is one of the few sports where unusually late growth spurts are relatively common. Scott McTominay of Manchester United provides a striking case. Between the ages of 18 and 20, when most men have stopped growing, he reportedly gained nearly 10 inches in height. While genetics clearly played a role, the physical stress of training at a professional level during those years likely amplified the adaptation of his bones, allowing his body to take full advantage of a late developmental window. Wolf's Law helps explain how that kind of dramatic change is biologically possible. Then there is Devon Larratt, the Canadian arm wrestling champion. Over decades of training, he has noticed that his arm itself has lengthened. At first glance this seems impossible, but the explanation lies in the constant torque and rotational stress applied to his arm bones. The body, faced with that stress, gradually remodeled the bone structure itself, lengthening and thickening it in response to the demands of his sport. These examples show us that Wolf's Law is not an abstract idea buried in a textbook, it is a biological reality we can observe in athletes, in patients, and in ordinary people who expose their bodies to consistent forces. Bone listens, it adapts, it reshapes itself to fit the mechanical story you tell it through movement, pressure, and impact. This is why a runner's tibia becomes stronger, why a gymnast's wrists thicken, and why a soldier's skeleton becomes measurably denser after years of carrying heavy loads. Wolf's Law is nature's way of ensuring that bone is never wasted, it grows where it is needed, and it fades where it is not. So when we ask whether bones can still change after adolescence, the answer is clear, they must, because they always do. The only real question is how much, and in what direction. Wolf's Law tells us that your skeleton is not a fixed frame but a responsive adaptive system, constantly being sculpted by the stresses you place on it. So can you grow taller after puberty? For most, growth is limited but bone is never finished adapting. With the right nutrition, stress, and understanding of Wolf's Law, your skeleton will continue reshaping itself throughout your life.